Hello everyone, welcome to another lab session on digital signal processing. In today's lab, we are going to talk about the Chebyshev approximation for IIR filter design. So, in theory class, we have seen how IIR filters work and what are the different types of IIR filters. So, in that, one of the types that I, uh, we discussed was the Chebyshev filter approximation. So, uh, today we are going to see how we can write a Scilab program for this IIR filter. So the design question that we have seen in our theory class is this, uh, design a Chebyshev filter for pass band attenuation of minus 6 dB and a stop band attenuation of minus 20 dB and your frequencies to be 2 and 3. The same numerical we have seen for our Butterworth design also. So we are going to use the same parameters which are AP is equal to 6 dB, AS is equal to 20 dB and my omega P and omega s they are in radians so this is radians per second okay so let's uh, get to this numerical so the formula that i have explained to you why in the deviations are given here so the first formula this is the deviation so the deviation is given here so this is my deviation so this is my deviation alpha beta so the alpha and beta they are the ripple factors the ripple and the pass so they are considered to be the uh, roll off factors or the ripple factors so we'll just keep them as alpha and beta the formulas are the same as this butterworth so i'll just write so these formulas are the same as your butterworth same as in butterworth design okay now the order the order of the filter n that is computed with this formula which is slightly different because in your butterworth it was ln beta by ln alpha here you have this beta square root of beta square minus one and root of alpha square minus one which is the additional terms that we have here so this is the first thing we see then coming to the next slide we are uh, doing what is this gamma so we have our gamma in the uh, Chebyshev derivation uh, which is used to uh, used for A and B computation so A and B computation so what are these A and B so you have to go back so see I would suggest you watch the theory videos also to understand what these means because if I go back few slides I have the derivations for the full Chebyshev so this is on the theory video I have explained all this parameters so for the programming I'm just going to say that gamma is uh, deviation formula um, it depends on the deviation uh, epsilon and then from gamma I can get my a and b which is used so the cutoff frequency I am going to select it as 2 uh, for our because it can be either the pass band or the stop band with both inclusive so given 2 and 3 I am just going to keep it as 2 because this is a textbook question so this question is from the Prokis book and in that book they have taken it as 2 so that I can show you the matching answers when we get the program running okay so the poles are, are given by this formula 2a cos theta of k so what is this 2 that 2 is my cutoff frequency though so the formula is cutoff frequency omega c a cos theta k plus j omega c b sin theta of k and theta of k is slightly different so i'll write theta of k is slightly different from butterworth so this is the formula we use for uh, theta of k so same process right so we have done so let's get to the programming uh, so this is the program I'll now just okay so what, what are the things these are the design parameters AP, AS, OP and OS that is the pass band frequency and the stop band analog frequencies then we find the epsilon which is given by this formula here good and then what is alpha what is beta so beta is the same alpha and beta so till the above step same as butterworth filter that's what I mean to write uh, and I also told here now the order is given by ln beta plus square root of beta square minus 1 divided by log alpha plus square root of alpha square minus 1 that is your order and we are using the seal function to round to the highest integer because it's 2.5 I want it to be 3 so that is why I'm using the seal function then after that compute gamma so what is the next thing we did we computed gamma so the gamma is given here by 1 by epsilon plus square root of this, this formula. I have just written that formula there. After that, compute my a and b. So, gamma inverse is written as 1 by gamma. So, if you see here, this gamma inverse, 
that is written as 1 upon gamma. Then finding theta of k. What is the formula for theta of k? Pi by 2 plus 2k minus 1 divided by 2m into 5. I got the theta k, cut off frequency, I'm keeping it to be 2. Then we find the poles using this formula, cut off frequency into a into cos theta of k plus cut off frequency into b into sine theta of k. And then we are finding the what? The polynomial, right? So the formula, what we need to find, this is the form. So what is the form for the butter over third? So the Chebyshev. The Chebyshev formula states this. See, this is the Chebyshev formula. G upon product of the poles. So the product of the poles, I am getting it here. So the Chebyshev, um, okay, where, uh, okay, so this is the numerator G. Okay, I'll come to that. So uh, let me just quickly do the denominator. So the denominator, so I have computed my poles, P of K. So these are the poles, S of K. And then I take the, I represent them in the polynomial form. All right, and then I take the product. So this P of K will represent my pole in this form, S minus SK. And then I have to multiply. So this is the product operator here. So that multiplication. So this is the denominator. Now my Q is the denominator. Then coming to the numerator, if you see the numerator is given to be G. So what is G? G is the product of the negative of the poles. So I am taking that here. So the product of the poles into if n is even, so when n is even, I get the reminder. So this p modulo uh, order comma 2. So this is used for finding even. So this is true. So that condition is true when n is equal to even. When n is equal to even, this is true. And then I perform this. g is equal to g into 1 by square root of 1 plus epsilon square. And for if it is... Uh, odd, then this is false, then it comes to the else condition, which is just multiplied with 1. Alright, so that is my numerator. So the numerator is taken care, it is a product of the poles into, for even, I have a multiple of 1 by uh, this, and for odd, I have a multiple of 1. Alright, good. So let me just uh, run this program. I will go to the last slide to show you this matching answers. So let me come to the Scilab command window okay so let us see what is my okay I, i'll show you uh, the theta theta is this values i get then uh, i'll show you the poles the poles are computed with s so if you see sorry s you can see the poles here and you can see the poles here this is the textbook answer for the poles and you can see how these are matching with this this is almost zero because minus 16 i is too small but the, all the other answers are mapping to these poles. Good. So the product of the poles, that is my um, product of the pole is, no, let me just then give you the numerator G. So the numerator is, I'm getting this answer and my textbook answer is 1.1584. Same. This is 0. You know, for minus 16, I is like 0 0.000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 16 zeros into some value and that is almost equal to 0, negligible. And then the denominator. So the denominator, I'm going to do what? So I'm going to take the denominator from where? From Q. So let's type Q. This is the denominator. SQ plus 0.738 S square plus 3.278 S plus 1.1584. See this and see this. It's matching. All right. So that is how you do it. We have designed your chippy shape. Now I can just go on to change whatever I like here. No, depending on these values, my order is going to change, my polynomials are going to change, but it doesn't matter because once I've written it for a single um, set of parameters, I, it is just, it holds, you know, it's a generalized uh, program, it can be run on any other values. And now for plotting the response, uh, just like how we had uh, uh, your uh, uh, Butterworth magnitude function, we have a Cheb 1 magnitude. So the Chebyshev, there are two approximations, Chebyshev 1 and Chebyshev 2 approximation. So um, uh, in our syllabus, we have only discussed Chebyshev 1 uh, approximation, and this is the one that gives you the magnitude. So I have just, uh, I've just changed this order. So this is uh, the value where you know, we use our program. So this is our program values. And uh, so order, cut off frequency, epsilon, and sample. So sample I've given to be in this range and then I plot I get something like this. So 
so this is not very uh, it doesn't represent a very good um, uh, magnitude response or you know or a frequency selective characteristic is not very clear so in order to show some clear uh, graphs i have done this one so the second one what i have here i have just put in order to be the same cut off frequency 3 epsilon 0.2 and the same sample uh, i do it and i am getting a very good uh, lpf so this is a very good response for an lpf so just to show um, this uh, clear response function i have kept this example all right so that is your to shape filter the design of to shape filter um, given um, I, I pretty much uh, done everything on this uh, whatever you know it is clearly mapped to the theory lecture we have seen all right so hope uh, this is clear for you i'll see you next class thank you